All right. Almost 12 years after it began on the Cryptic Studios, not PWE, the parent company. And the big question here is, is Star Trek Online worth playing in 2022? Well, take a look. The Terran Gold Angel. Something we still haven't seen on TV. But it makes sense. If there's a red angel, there's got to be a gold one. And these are the type of adventures that you will expect in Star Trek Online, now on the parent company. Gearbox software for 2022. So when you first log in, you're greeted by a choice of different characters to make for different fashions. I should note that Cardassian, Ferrasin, and Liberated Borg, Talaxian, are purchases that come with certain packs. You can also make a Discovery character. Now back to Discovery, we only have Alien, Vulcan, and Human. I don't know why they didn't include Romulan in there. And under the Jem'Hadar, we have regular Jem'Hadar, and we have the Alphas mentioned in Deep Space Nine. So you can choose either one. These characters start at level 60. Currently, the level cap is 65. Now you can also choose a TOS character, which is human, Andorian, Tellarite, and Vulcan. These characters are all free to play, to create one. I believe you get three or four slots. You can choose Romulan, Reman, Liberated Borg is actually a purchase with a pack, and Romulan Alien. Now, there's a little bit going on here. If you're into the high DPS stuff, Romulan Alien is the highest DPS character in the game, followed by Romulan and the Dominion's Jem'Hadar. At least for space combat, these are the three most powerful races. Then we come to traditional Starfleet as we know it. Now there are a couple unlocks here also. Cardassian, Cajun, Ferengi, I believe Klingon, Liberated Borg, and Talaxian. But all these other races are there for you to use. And this is what typically Space Dock looks like on the outside. And unlike other games, you're not limited to how many missions you can play, how many instances you can queue for, for your leveling grind. You can just go through the entire storyline. So as far as a free to play model, this is probably the best free to play model I've seen. And some of the story arcs like this one, the rewards are so good that some of them are meta. So you can go through the whole game just for free. I mean, there are commodities and there's the exchange and the economy, but this video is about, is it worth playing? And it totally is. This character is currently flying the Spearhead Retrofit from Discovery, which comes out of a lockbox. And we'll find out a little bit about lockboxes in my previous video I spoke about them and other streamers have spoken about them. This 23rd century ship was actually named after the actor that uh, played Nog on Deep Space Nine when he passed away. But this one is completely free. Yes, that's right. Completely free. Now, if we go into the event store here and reclaim items, we every year you get three ships. And there are some ships that the builds, actually, if you're into meta builds, are part of the meta 
for that particular type of officer or discipline, however you want to word it, tech, engineer, or science. Okay? But they've given us some wonderful ships this year for free just for completing events. And then there's always the event on top of the event. Yeah, there's a large yearly event. And it's right here. After you complete each event, you'll be able to choose one promo pack. Now, promo packs generally cost between $50 and $500 before you get a ship out of them. So, getting one for free for one character on your account is a pretty nice thing. Other ships in the game, we see the Sona. This ship right here that I'm about to transfer to comes from your fleet's colony and it is completely free. There's a mechanic in the game, it has decent seating as you can see, called your reputation system. Now once you complete your reputation system, let me see if I find one that I haven't already claimed the uh, ship module on. There it is. So these ship modules are required. You can buy them through the C store, of course. And you're allowed to make one for every reputation. So that translates into two free tier 6 ships that you can get. Now, I do recommend every player join a fleet. And as you can see, the fleet has different holdings. You can see how many provisions you've got. And there are places to contribute. Surprisingly today, there's places to contribute dilithium. I do have a video out showing you how to make and refine dilithium. So, um, yeah, these are the weekly projects here on the research lab. There's a few spec points, uh, dilithium. I usually run the combat booster. Um, a lot of members or most of the people in my fleet are casual players or I have a lot of vets, you know, um, people with limited resources. So as they're developing their character, this helps them to do a little more damage and have some damage resistances by running this mission once a week. So I'm going to snag a couple of uh, fleet credits for myself because every time you donate to the fleet, you make fleet credits and I need to make money. I know how to turn those fleet credits into actual in-game energy credits. So whenever I can, I try to fill something in that other people don't. Duty officers and stuff like that generally get filled quick. Uh, the money, not really. That's usually me. But the dilithium, I'm pretty surprised is there. I will link a video on how to play this game 100% for free, but I have to warn you, if you follow the entire video, this game will turn into a full-time job. So I learned how to do it when I was disabled and in a hospital, just to pass the time and take a break from the regular game and have something else to do. and. You could use bits and parts of it here and there and just help yourself out. The game is completely free to play. It is. There's a way to do it. But, you know, you should put some money into the game. It could be $5. It could be $20 or $200. There are people that put thousands of dollars into this game so that it can get better for everyone. Now I transwarped over to the Federation fleet base. Okay. A few things. When you join a uh, guild or a fleet, 
You need to see what permissions you have. Permission one on my fleet even allows you to buy without donating at all, without contributing. And I'll explain why. Anything that you donate to a fleet becomes fleet credits. If you're uncomfortable where you're at or you find another fleet that you like, I know RP fleets are hard to find right now, but when I've had members that find them, I have no bad feelings. This guild was created for the community to have fun. So these numbers here usually mean how much you have to donate before you get to that rank. In my fleet, from rank one, if you have the credits, you can spend them. And the reason being, you're about to see different things you can do with those fleet credits. These are special missions. Remember I ever talked about reputation and getting your f free fleet module? Wow, getting tongue-tied today. Well, when you hit tier four on each of the types of reputation, you're allowed to run these missions at this console. These missions take about I think 24 hours and they're gonna give you fleet credits that you can then donate also to your fleet now this is one of the ways you make money well you can go to this guy first of all and for a thousand dilithium ask him for a duty officer pack you know all different flavors but this guy right here, these are random officers. I usually buy these purple ones with my fleet credits and sell them on the exchange. And I've gotten some pretty expensive ones for my ship. But as you can see, they are also broken up by engineering, science, and tactical. The white ones are the ones that are purchased to donate to your fleet. Now you can usually tell how old your fleet is just by coming up to this console. This fleet started in 2013. If I was to go to the 52nd Vanguard, that would have another number up there. I think a year or two ahead, which is the fleet I started out with. This gentleman right here is very popular because he sells you standard, but epic Mark 10 fleet gear, phasers, shields, engines, and stuff. And that's where you go to all your hangar pets. This young lady is a tailor. So you can do a lot with the tailor you can change your character's complete appearance if you wanted to it's worth noting you see i have a klingon uniform on a romulan um but it is worth noting that certain characters that you'll get through the storyline or uh through a pack you cannot change the costume they're wearing on All right, now this is a little hidden gem, Blowfung Klingon. The first two tabs are operational assets that aren't used anymore, so don't buy them. But then you have these, science, engineering, and tactical. And right underneath them, there it is. Each one of these has a value, and these values go towards your skill tree. So if we take a look at your skill tree, you're going to notice that each point has a value. These are worth 50. These are worth, you know, up to 15. So you can get up to 10 extra points into each section of your skill tree. 
Now I do recommend you buy the 4 hour ones even though I'm showing them all to you. Because the 4 hour ones are the only ones that the timer stops when you log off and starts again when you come back. The others, even if the 4 hours aren't up, will expire when you log back onto the game. just to be clear the four hour ones are the gold ones now on the fleet star base you also find weapons armor shields not only on the starbase, on the colony, in other places. So I'm not going to take you through every single one of them. Because then this video will be like an hour long. But also these Lurpas are actually mission drops. You don't even have to buy them. But to save on Dilithium and on the upgrade tokens. It's a good way to go if you got the fleet credits. So again very important to have fleet credits the more you support your fleet the more it supports you now i'm on the fleet spire right now and this is where some magical tactical consoles show up And if you notice these consoles are giving crit chance this crit severity consoles also here there's also warp cores singularity cores there's the crit severity ones you know so your fleet is a very good way to play on a budget and to hang out with people a lot of missions are more fun when you do them in a group. These advanced ones you can actually get from the storyline. And these, I can't believe I didn't buy them on these guys. Make it easier to fly through Voth or Fluidic Space. And on the research lab. This is known for a lot of things. You'll come here to buy unlocks for extra trade slots and stuff, but it's mostly known for these duty officer missions. Then you have some options over here for kit frames. If you notice, they're already epic. these R&D missions so you can click on one and then go into your R&D and find it of course I didn't pay attention to which one I clicked on <laughs> but you run the R&D mission and you'll get sometimes an unlock for a special weapon special upgrade a battery you never know what you're gonna get at different places I'm not only talking about this one now the research lab is known for these science consoles so you have exciters and restorative the big difference between the two these have a chance of healing your ship on a science ability the other one has a chance of doing more damage with the science ability and yeah there's a whole bunch of stuff right through your fleet that saves you money if you haven't subscribed yet please do it the endeavor system which is your account wide you could say reputation system I am completely done with space I'm now working on the ground and this is only because I took a year off because this takes forever to complete so here's my three missions 
and let me just complete them real quick and turn them in so you can see what you get for them this is your admiralty and that's a whole nother thing I do have videos on all this stuff so just look out for them and new 2020 versions are on their way alright so I've returned to earth after doing my endeavors and when I click on these boxes you're gonna notice some really good rewards there's energy credits dilithium I got a spec point and a whole bunch of energy credits so yeah there's no negative side to playing this game except for the lockbox getting game. some unusual readings from the spore colonies in this system they're mutating at an accelerated rate, absorbing and emitting some nasty radiation as they do so. Here's a sample of the story as you play right, through well, it. Well, the spores are growing on the debris of this doomsday machine, which is where all of that radiation is coming from. This is a problem. The radiation is bleeding into the mycelial network through the spores. It'll cause serious damage if we don't deal with it soon. Hate to say it, but we need to cull the mutated spore colonies before the damage to the network is too great to reverse. Now, of course, we're not going to sit through the whole mission, but this is off the Discovery storyline, and it is really, really good. This is one of the patrols that make you the most money. And grant you the most XP. Let's deal with the next spore colony before the Mopai send reinforcements. Now Jewel is about to have a bad day. This is an off meta torpedo build. And the discovery ship trait facilitates this kind of build really good. At the end you're going to see the amount of drops. And that's where a lot of your cash come from. Okay, and right here is what it's all about. See all these drops? 
you can sell them, discard them, and stuff, and just make millions and billions of energy credits. And MT Stew and Casual SAB, I'm interested to see what Jetstar. Did you see how Jaula ran like a scalded tar? She is not Klingon, and a disgrace to the memory of her honorable brother. We shall remain vigilant. If the coward Jaula shows her sticky face here again, I will finish what we started here this day. I will send her screaming to the gates of Grethel. Is it me, or do most forms of Klingon justice ultimately end with screaming in Grethel? Look, as long as House Mokai isn't polluting and destroying the mycelial network. Gauss and Jetstar, without a doubt, have something great to say about this game. Whether it be in a positive or negative, yeah. All those links will be below when you haven't subbed, please do.